right, working on this JMS, trying to figure it out. But we've also got a CB1, which is what I really want to work on. And I got some tires for it, so now I'm motivated to do a little bit of work on it. Welcome to CB1 overhaul video number one. Got a little dead spider on there already, so that's cool. So I guess the first thing we're gonna do is do a little video on vintage wheels. Getting them up to snuff. Checking out the free wheel, or it looks like cassette. Just making sure the wheels are too trued, overhauling the hubs, and getting the new tubes and tires on, getting them ready for this bike. And we'll start cleaning it up and work on the overhaul and the other stuff. Bottom bracket, headset, cable housing, brake pads, all the good fun stuff. Most vintage bikes have a 15 millimeter for their rear lock nuts. Because these are not quick release, they're bolt on. Well, at least the rear. The front's quick release. Quick release. Oh. Front wheel's pre lawyer lips, so it pops right out. And that is a crusty feeling hub. Nice wide old vintage single walled rim. Spike's not exactly high end, it's very middle of the road. It was made to be a commuter bike, not a race bike. This rear hub also feels very crusty. First step, I'm going to ditch these really crusty sidewalls. You can see they're just completely delaminated. They're totally dead and gone. I don't really care for these old mountain style tires anyways. This one might still have too much air in it. Schrader valve tube in this definitely pressed the valve hole. People do that all the time. It sometimes works, but eventually this gets knocked around and it splits and tears down there. So it's definitely a temporary kind of thing. Ironically, this is the only one holding air. Ditch this tire as well. First thing to take note of is it's single walled. So it has this rubber rim liner that hides these spoke nipples to keep from puncturing your tires. Sometimes these get old and cracked and they tear next to that spoke nipple. And then it'll uh, pop your brand new tube you put in. But these look very new and nice. These rims look so nice. They have like no wear at all. They look brand new. So the CB1's wheel has a cassette, so I took off the other axle nut and washer, and we're going to use a cassette tool. <clears throat> now in previous videos we used this tool because it's got the pin and it goes through the, the hollow quick release, but this doesn't have one. It's got a solid axle, so luckily I have a cassette tool for a solid axle. Slides right in the cassette, let the axle poke through, so we'll use a chain whip. Wrap and hold that chain. You can pinch the chain this way, or you can come up on higher cogs to hold it. Whatever you like, as long as it doesn't slip. We're gonna hold this cassette while going lefty loosey on the tool. Ugh, tight. Comes right off, comes right off. Comes right off. Get some of this crud out of here. Who wants to work around that junk? On these vintage bolt-on wheels, sometimes they will slip in the frame. And you can get big serrated washers. This one's got a little bit of serrations in it. Just a little bit of lines. You can get big serrated washers that'll really grip that frame and keep them from not slipping. So really, the first step is always to check dish. For second addition tool, three points of contact. The blocks both touch on the sides and the little center guy sits on the axle lock nut. Not the axle itself because sometimes people put them in wrong. And that can throw you off and it doesn't really matter. The lock nut does. Coming back we got all three points of contact so the wheel is dished correctly. One of these days, I'll get a really out of dish or really out of true wheel that we can do some serious surgery on. But so far, I've been very, very lucky that none of my stuff's all janky. Which is lucky for, for me, but not so good for showing off how to do stuff. Even though this hub felt crusty, when I spin it in the stand and touch the stand, I don't feel any vibration. So I think there's a very good chance that this hub with some new bearings and grease is going to work out great. Lining it up at the center of the rim. I'm blocking one side off so we can work on one side at a time and I have to worry about scratching and doing weird stuff on two sides. 
Oh baby, this wheel has a little teeny tiny bit of wobble, which is better than I expected from a vintage room. It's almost perfect. I don't think I'm gonna have to touch it at all. Check the other side just in case. Oh yeah, this side's even better looking. Well, so much for that. Got one little low spot that I don't think is low enough to really care about. It's really good. God, it seems perfect on this rim too. Like the last one I worked on it was the best thing I've ever seen in my life. This one was the second best one I've ever seen in my life. So I guess now we're gonna go to cleaning and then uh, overhauling that hub. Just lucking out left and right. I need a clean, fresh shop towel to sort of get all this mud I just made off of here. Grab the axles, try to get in here, even though it's got a zillion spokes crossing in the way. Wipe all this mud. Now we're going to come in here and try and clean as much goop and junk out of the axle as possible. Axles are usually filled full of hair and grit and road grime. So all sorts of stuff gets in there. And we're going to open this thing up and we want none of this stuff to get into the bearing area. Even though we're going to clean it and replace all the bearings, it's just better to not set yourself up for problems. Just trying to scrape gunk out. This side's a lot easier because there's no cassette threads or recesses to deal with. It's just all external. You can see a bunch of gunk built up right around, along this dust seal. The axle spins and it is some sort of hair or fiber and this is real normal. Now since this is a free hub, even though it's a seven speed, you can actually get in here and reach these axle nuts, which is pretty cool. We're still going to work from the other side because it's more exposed and easy. Put down a clean, lint-free towel to work on. Grab a cone wrench and a 17. Hold the cone with the 15. Lefty Lucy, that was easy. We're threading the lock nut off. You can see it's got one big lock nut, one thin washer, one thick washer. I'm laying them all out on this towel in order. Next we have the cone. Spinning the other side of the axle. Fine threads take forever. I'm just going to go ahead and pull the other side out too. Oh, there went a couple bearings already. I'm gonna really get all this dried grease off these cones and lock nuts. I'm gonna really get a good look at them. You can see the shiny spot on the cone. It's where the, right where the ball bearings contact as it spins around. And you're looking for damage, like gravel, like pitting. Looks totally fine. That's good news, because these hubs are a little crusty. This probably is because this grease is a million years old. Maybe they're a little too tight. At least this one looks totally fine, reusable. I probably couldn't get replacements for this anyways. If you go to a bunch of bike shops, have used parts, and dig through their hubs, trying to find one of these hubs. Trying to find one that has a good cone I can steal. I've done that many times. I've bought $10, $15 hubs just to steal a cone, just to steal a lock nut or a spacer I'm missing. This cone also looks very good. If you're working on a real high-end race bike and you're worried about it, you can take a ballpoint pen and run it along that nice bright silver edge and you'll be able to feel any imperfections in that ballpoint pen. Again, these look fantastic and they're definitely good enough to not add any drag or friction. So while we're at this stage in cleaning things, I might as well wipe all this hard grit off all these spacers that are going back in so I don't actually try and put a dirty spacer back in. And you got grit and grime in between the spacers. You gotta lock it down with a wrench, and that grit and grime is moving. It might move and shift and fall out, make you think it's tight, and then it'll come loose on you. It was very loose when I folded it apart, so that could be part of why that happened. So, what I have here is the Park Tools Ruler. It does have all the common ball bearing sizes for bikes. So, I took one of the old ball bearings out. I'm sure it's quarter inch, and put it in quarter inch, and it fits in that quarter inch hole perfectly. I got a bag of brand new quarter inch ball bearings, grade 25, which is a very good grade. Grade hundreds for cheap stuff, 25s for high end stuff. It's not much different, so I only use 25. And it got me a little magnet. 
for the 10 method, T for 10 on the front, E for 11 in the bottom bracket, N for 9 in the rear hub, this should be 9 in the rear hub. 6, 7, 8, 9. So we've got them all out with this little stick magnet. These are a few bucks auto parts stores or I find my garage sales all the time. Now I'm going to spray degreaser in here because we want to clean all this. See this old hub it has this like a uh, little axle cap, could be plastic, could be black metal. It is a trap to think you can pop these out to clean it better. You can definitely do it. You might even be able to get them back in without damaging or destroying them. Maybe. I've definitely wrecked these, damaged, destroyed. I don't take them out anymore. I just bend Q-tips around and clean up underneath them. Waste 20 Q-tips. Don't wreck your life chasing that. Get in here, clean big chunks of grease off. Q-tips are very cheap. This is exactly what they're for. And a little bit of this old grease is left in here. It's not really gonna matter. Fresh grease is gonna reliquify it or push it right out of the way where it's not gonna be touching anything or being an issue. Blue shop towels are uh, lint free. A little more expensive, you can get auto parts stores, auto body supply stores. Use these to get any lint out. Those red rags are very linty. So I do not recommend using red rags for stuff like this. Probably even use the magnet or anything round or dull. So push, push and scrape. Let's spray some more degreaser in here and just let it sit. And this is nice and round little end. It's not poking through the paper towels. It's not, well, I did that time. It's not likely to mar or drag across or scrape up that bearing surface. Folding up little corners on this lint-free paper towel, sneaking them down here around the threads. Trying to get as much dirt, but also as much degreaser back out of here. So the mess with our new grease. Clean and dry in there. Huh. Now the other side. The other side of some degreaser puddles in there. Those puddles of degreaser this is the last thing you want. With your nice fresh new grease. Now that everything's clean, you do a little bit of pre-greasing. Just a little teeny bit along this cone. A little teeny bit on the other cone. We're gonna shoot quite a bit in here along these bearing races. Pre-loading this full of grease is helpful because the grease will kind of hold the, the bearings into place too. And you want lots of grease on those bearings. I did skip one important step. You can go ahead and do that now. It's easy to forget stuff. I'm going to make sure this cone and this lock nut are tightened down into each other. Because if this one's loose, the one that hides underneath the cassette, it's impossible to get them tight later. Okay, nice and tight. Without pulling it all the way open again. So I'm going to start on the drive side. So that's the side we're going to drop the axle in from. I'm going to load bearings in. One. Two. Nine. Press them down into place. Now we can drop in this pre-lubed axle. Spin it, spin it, spin it to make sure it knocks all the bearings into place. Not all popped up too high or popped down or get pushed out the other side with the axle goes in. Now we'll load this. Usually I like to load this side before I put the axle all the way in because the bearings won't fit. Yep. Yep, I totally screwed up. Okay. Gently pull this side back out. Make sure it's not taking any bearings or dropping them out. Now it's out just enough so I can load this side. One, two, eight. The grease is really holding in place well. Nine. So they're all in and push them out of the way. So push this axle through gently, turning it and pushing. It's not pulling or knocking any of the bearings out. Beautiful. Thread this cone on, which will take forever. Fine threads, grease, just boringly, boringly threading this cone on. All right, and we're in. Not too tight, not too loose. We have the spacers set out in the order they came off, so we know it goes thick spacer, thin spacer, lock nut. Sometimes lock nuts have faces, like a knurled side to go against the spacers, and a more rounded but knurled side to let it uh, slide in and out of dropouts. 
This one's the same on both sides. It's cheap. It's just a thin, thin nut. Doesn't really matter which way it goes back on. More fine thread twisting. I have lost young bicycle mechanics. We're learning how to work on bikes. Showing them how to overhaul hubs. Because it was so much boring threading that they just gave up and never wanted to work on bikes again. So don't feel bad if you hate it. Because I usually put too much grease in stuff. I want it to come out now. I'll usually do this again after the first test ride. It's better to have a little too much grease than not enough grease and have things get destroyed. Is my thinking. I'm probably wrong, but what you gonna do? Now, if it were a freewheel, like I originally thought, you'd need to put the freewheel back on before getting your hub adjustment, because it changes the tension on the hub and changes your bearing adjustment. The cassettes, not so much. They can go on any time. So we don't really have to worry about that when we do our hub adjustment. That being said, this is a bolt-on axle, and that does change things. So most old freewheel wheels are bolt-on axles. On a quick-release axle, the quick-release tensions down and sucks your frame together and adds a little tension and tightens your hub. So you need to have a little teeny tiny tiny bit of play. You wiggle this axle up and down, back and forth. You can imperceptibly feel it wiggle in there. With nuts, it's the opposite. Nuts tighten down, and when they tighten down, they actually sort of suck everything out. So you actually don't want any play. So you want to feel no play at all, but still have it feel buttery, buttery smooth. It's a little bit trickier. Now it's got a little play. Let's take it in. No play. So you don't, you don't want to be like, oh, we're fine, because it's there's no play, but you're actually way too tight. So I want to find that play and just barely turn it in. I'll lock these things together and probably mess up that adjustment. Sometimes I'll hold a wrench on the other side so nothing can move. You can also put this in an axle vise, put it in a vise so your axle can't move. So you know you're just tightening the thing you want to tighten. And not moving everything. So I'm going to do that with this. I'm going to hold the other side. I'll hold this side. This is where it gets real fun. And, I haven't done this in a while, hold the cone wrench, the same hand, double wrenches, and try and tighten this down so nothing else can move. Wrench on the back side is keeping the whole axle from moving, cone wrench is keeping the cone from moving, and we'll see what that did. Way too tight! Loosening this lock nut, backing the cone off, except the cone's tight. So I have to come to this, this side to hold it, so I'm back the cone off. So I'm going to check for our wiggle again. Nope, still too tight. Backing the cone off. No wiggle, but not too tight. Backing the cone off. No play. Backing the cone off. Still no play, back in the cone off. Still no play, back in the cone off. Now we got a little play. Just gonna go ahead and try this without doing the three wrench method. And it's got a bunch of play. Now we can try another trick. So I didn't really jam this nut down tight into the cone. So the whole thing should move as a unit. And hold this other side, the wrench, and try and turn this lock nut, and maybe the cone will turn with it. If it's too tight, it won't. It'll just pull the threads and damage things. If it's loose enough, it'll all turn together as a unit, which it did. Still got a little play. Still got a little play. Now it's no more play. Let's try tightening this down again, see what happens. It's probably tight enough. So now we just barely got the play out. Everything's tight enough. Feels too tight, but I know the play is right there. 
It feels barely too tight. So we're gonna say it's probably good. This guy is ready for a cassette and to have the nuts reinstalled. Let's go ahead and take a look at this cassette. We're looking for chain wear as the chain drags across the face of these teeth. That one might be more polished. Not too bad. It's usually the smallest gears that are totally destroyed because people's ride around the hardest gear all the time. Let's check this smallest ring. That's usually the most destroyed. Yeah, this one's pretty polished. It's kind of deep. It doesn't go up over the tooth. It goes all the way across. I'm going to say it's a new cassette time.